Hello everyone and welcome to another aircraft design video in Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2 and in this episode we have the Hughes H4 Hercules uh, deridingly known as the Spruce Goose because it was made out of spruce uh, because of wartime limitations on metal access uh, so the question is can it fly and I believe it can I, I've tested it. Th uh, this version can but I believe it could in real life is sort of more important and uh, that is based on an assessment of its engines plus its mass. And I mean, its wingspan is the largest wingspan in history uh, of any aircraft that has actually flown so far as of the making of this video. There are contenders to beat it out, but at 320 feet, uh, 97 meters, it is the longest wingspan. And so the wing loading is good. Uh, the question is whether it can get enough power to get enough speed. And I think the answer to that is just yes. Um, it uses these Wasp Major engines. Now, in the initial versions that were placed on the Spruce Goose were a little bit less power than the ones we have here. We have 3,800 horsepower, uh, which is about average for a Wasp Major. Uh, initially, they had 3,000 horsepower, and uh, they went up to 4,300 horsepower. Uh, they were ultimately used on the B-36. The B-36 had six of these plus four jet engines. The B-36 could fly with six of these and it had a, a maximum takeoff weight of 183 tons. Um, it had a standard military operational mass higher than the empty mass of the Spruce Goose. The Spruce Goose has a maximum takeoff weight of 180 tons, so less than the B-36, but the B-36 would take off with its jets on. Uh, it could fly without the jets on, but I think it needed the jets to take off on any reasonable airfield. Uh, in fact, it still needed a pretty long airstrip to actually get off the ground. Uh, but it had less wing, so there's that. Also, it had them in pusher prop configuration, which was worse in terms of them catching on fire. Uh, the Spruce Goose also had problems with the engines potentially catching on fire. And uh, thankfully, we don't have to worry about that here. But yeah, uh, that was a constant problem with the Wasp Majors. And the pusher pop, prop configuration on the B-36 made that worse. More on the B-36 in the B-36 video. I already did a video on that particular plane. Uh, but overall, I think that with eight of these propeller engines, uh, as long as not, I don't know if it would have had a maximum takeoff weight of 180 tons, though we have been able to take off with 180 tons with this, um, with it being a 3,800 horsepower engine. With just 3,000, which I believe it was uh, built with, I think uh, it would probably not have been able to take off with, uh, with that much. Well, taking off is a complicated thing. You'll know that I put wheels on here. And we're talking about taking off from an airfield. It's an uh, open question whether Kerbal Space Program could ever simulate uh, the actual dynamics of taking off from water, which is a different thing. But in real life, the only thing the Spruce Goose ever did was take off from water, uh, due to ground effect though. It was able to take off from water at a slower speed than it normally would have been able to take off. And so that's what led to the open question about whether it would work or not. But once it's out of the water, it should be able to pick up the speed necessary to actually work. And so that, that I, you know, that, that's my argument. But anyway, here we have the Spruce Goose. It is the correct mass. Uh, we do not have the full uh, takeoff mass here because this is as much fuel as it would carry. Uh, the full takeoff mass includes cargo. And of course, the more cargo it had, the less fuel it could carry. Uh, as it is here, it was supposed to have a 3,000 mile range going 250 miles an hour for 12 hours. So we're probably carrying more fuel than we should. I don't know if they would throttle down the engines to go 250 miles an hour. Uh, it's possible that they'd have to actually keep it to full throttle the whole way in order to get to that speed and keep it. It does have a lot of momentum though. Anyway, enough talking about it though. Let's take it outside and I'll talk more about it there. Okay, I'm going to t try and take off from the regular KSP runway just to give a sense of scale, but we can always use the shuttle runway otherwise. I put on the brakes. It's sort of wobbling back and forth because of the odd wheel configuration. It was typical on uh, flying boats to have a single wheel landing gear like this. And, and actually for the B-36 they contemplated a single wheel landing gear too. Um, right now, uh, don't, don't bother giving suggestions for how to fix this. 
in the water it would do this anyway that's why the pontoons are there um, I decided not to change the pontoons from the red color there otherwise I had to do some custom color configurations for stuff anyway uh, fly by wire on uh, throttle up brakes are on ignition flaps flap setting 2 it'll steady out as we go along so it'll be alright and actually, I think these pontoons do have a landing gear available somewhere. Or uh, there's a different uh, part that might have a landing gear. There is some use of lead weights in here in order to make sure it's the correct mass, but it's basically evenly distributed between the cockpit and the tail. So it didn't change the center of mass. Okay, let's go. It looks a little bit weird, I know, but uh, it'll settle out soon. Dimensionally, it may be a little bit off, especially the tail doesn't look right to me, but then the tail never looked right on the spruce goose, so... It, it's the right height, I actually took a procedural tank... Oh, no, hold on, let me push it down. I don't want it to take off just yet. Um, the... Yeah, I had to use a procedural tank to verify the height of that, and it is the right height. Uh, and it looks like the right thickness, but, you know, the problem with the spruce goose is... From a lot of angles, it doesn't look like it ought to be this way. <laughs> um, it looks like it's wrong. Okay, well, there's no keeping it down now. We're at like 100 miles an hour, so... Oh, I forgot about the landing gear retraction thing. That uh, This uh, plane has that problem just like the AN-225 has uh, trouble when uh, retracting landing gear, it actually slows down. I think it might have something to do with tweak scaling landing gear, but I'm not sure. But retracting the flaps at the same time as retracting the landing gear uh, keeps the velocity stable. The fly-by-wire is twitching the rudder. As you can see, it's not exactly uh, easy to get this up. Um, it's, uh, it actually flies very much like I would expect it to fly. So that's excellent, right? That's what you would want. Right now we're not carrying any cargo, again it's supposed to be able to carry 17 tons uh, with the full fuel load here. And I have not yet gotten it to 250 miles an hour, though I think it should be able to. Climbing takes a while with this. You do have to sort of be patient. So it seems like we can take off from the regular runway without problems. We saw some bumps along the way though. It didn't uh, perturb this too much. Now technically the spruce goose, um, it, it was actually a milder slope here and then it turned up a little bit more. I just made it a single slope there so uh, fixing things I would probably fix that among other things. The wing tips were a little bit more rounded than they are here. I've made them straight. Let's move out these lines a little bit more. I used uh, fire spare parts for these rounded pieces, but I had to recolor those. I think while we're going slow, I might as well do try and set it down in the water. And then after that, we'll take off and then try and go higher and faster. So I've throttled down, and you can sort of see the stats for the engines if you're curious. Um, but I've throttled down right now. The maximum thrust, if you want to measure by thrust, is 30 kilonewtons. I, I mean, in theory, mixture should be 1.0 at this altitude. I don't know why it defaults to 0.7, but I, I'll just leave it be. Now, it does have a huge wing, so it, it does sort of do a glidey thing. Um, 
it's actually tough to get down. Uh, you have to be patient to actually get this down again once it's uh, in the air. I measured wing placement as best I could based on the schematics. It still looks like it's a little bit too far forward, but it certainly flies appropriately. It looks a lot better from the front view than from like any other. You know, here it's fine. Though the this nose is of course the Antonov nose. It um, the spruce goose actually has a higher tilt to the nose, so it's more like up here the point of the nose, and then it slopes down because flying boat. But I didn't have a cockpit quite like that. And while I'm into modeling, I'm I'm not gonna model the spruce goose nose. Interestingly, the first time I tried to sit down in the ocean, I did it close to the shuttle landing facility with this real KSC mod, of, uh, which uses uh, Kerbal Constructs, and unfortunately the sea wasn't really the sea because the shuttle landing facility collider extended out into the ocean, and I ended up sitting down on the collider above the water. So interesting to note if you use the real KSC mod you probably should go out from the, from the KSC runway instead or at least uh, turn south so you actually get to water. Now I did mention that the engines here have a little bit more thrust than the Spruce Goose ones actually had and so we'll try and take off with less throttle. This is probably the best way to handle that. So once we splash down we'll try and take off with reduced throttle. So I'm putting an extra notch of flaps in. I don't know why the engine sound is only coming through my right speaker, right audio channel, but it is. It's just how it is right now. Okay, we've splashed down. Oh, we've gone up again. Dang it. Going too fast. Go hard though. Ooh. Okay, just stick it, stick it, stick it. Okay, now we encounter a different problem where it doesn't really want to slow down in here. It's got a lot of momentum. So I actually reverse thrust on these. You can see it's up and there's a reverse reverse thrust. Now I've reverse thrust and I'm actually reversing them. I don't know if the Spruce Goose would have been able to do this, but it helps to do this. Okay, we don't want to go backwards. Regular thrust, and now let me just uh, calculate how much we should throttle down by. 3000 divided by 3800 horsepower. 0.789 is throttle lever, uh, level. So let's just go for about three quarters thrust. Well, I, actually, I can get exact right here. Uh, 789. Uh, oh, that's that's about right. Okay, so that's how much power the Spruce Goose would have actually had at the time. It could have been updated with the B-36 engines, which is what these are, since they're the same engine, just a little bit upgraded. But again, the hydrodynamics in Kerbal Space Program aren't, I mean, aren't even close to real life, so... Taking off from here that is not indicative of anything. Basically, I'm pushing down on the stick until I actually want it to go up. And we don't want it to go up too fast. Otherwise, we're going to stall out. Oh, which we pretty much did there. And now we're just sort of skimming, waiting for uh, pickup in speed. So I can track the flaps. I'm not going to track the flaps until we get to like 15 meters per second. But in this respect, it seems to be very realistic, right? We've crawled down to the right level, and it's doing what it seems like the Spruce Goose did. Now, with less of a fuel load, and less of a load altogether, 
that'd be a lot easier. I wonder if retracting the flap just a notch would be better. I guess it's not no harm, we could just splash down again. It seems to be okay. It's picking up now. The real spruce goose is silver, and unfortunately I couldn't get silver textures on all these parts. That would take a little bit more time. Actually, building this did not take much time at all, and it only required one test um, crash, if you will, to adjust and make sure that we could take off properly. That crash was due mainly to the position of the landing gear, which, of course, the Spruce Goose didn't actually have. So, These engines, by the way, are not just used on the B-36 and this. Uh, they were also used on the Boeing 7, uh, sorry, Boeing 377, the Pregnant Guppy, which carried rocket parts, uh, the Globemaster, Flying Boxcar, and the Hughes XF-11, which uh, Howard Hughes himself famously crashed in. It is admittedly not easy to climb with this thing when it has this much power. Of course, if I throw it up to the full 3,800 horsepower, that would be a different deal. It will climb a little bit better. Not not great, still, but a little bit better. This, however, is tortuous. <laughs> it's like one meter per second vertical. Interestingly, these aren't procedural rudders. These are actually the big S elevons, the stock parts, re-textured re using DCK. So that's how I did those. And that's because the procedural parts, um, if you try and use them to make, uh, uh, if you use the procedural uh, control surface, it can't be this wide. In order to make these, I used the all moving wing and sort of messed with it a little bit. So those are actually all moving wing parts. I could have done all moving wing for those too, but I got uh, the, turns out that the big S stock parts the elevons work pretty well. They basically fit the bill with tweak scaling, of course. This is supposed to go 250 miles per hour, so that's about 120 meters per second. A little bit less than that. Oh, we're not doing too badly now. 88 meters per second, one kilometer in altitude. It's gonna be a pain to slow back down again. Let me get some extra room from the runway. Actually, you know what? We should go for the shuttle runway this time. I'm, I'm satisfied with the performance right now. I don't think it's going to go too much faster. I think it's going to end up with the performance it ought to. I have not yet put runways in at LAX. I do have runways at other locations in the save. That's one reason I use it. Right? We've got uh, various locations. JFK, Norfolk, Detroit, um, Moffett Field, and Edwards. Do not ask me to fly to any of those in this. It's going to take too long. 90 meters per second now while descending. Now, of course, it was not supposed to land on a runway, but for my own uh, convenience, I've given it the ability to do that. And at least here we can use our brakes instead of reversing the engines. Incidentally, uh, it is also the tallest aircraft, thanks to its tail, beating the Airbus A380 by 0.1 meters. So, I guess they really didn't want that record, because <laughs> uh, they, they could have easily gotten it, but they didn't. Tallest aircraft is not usually a record people aim for. It has a tendency to pitch up very quickly, and I think that's because of the all moving wing surfaces in the back. So if I ever try and pitch up, it tends to respond over respond to that. It might be also the the fly by wire system of the atmospheric autopilot. I should have flown when there was gun oh there's a shadow. I was looking for my shadow. very high. 
but thankfully it's a long runway. Well, it looks like it can fly at 37 meters per second even. And with the brakes, it sure doesn't take long to stop. But here it is. The Hughes H H4 Hercules. The H1 is a different plane, and I would like to make that. But there's the Hughes H4 Hercules in not all of its glory, but most of its glory. <laughs> and uh, this is probably the best rendition I'm going to be doing of this particular plane. Uh, yep, I I'm quite satisfied with it. It flies very well. It, it flies as I would expect it to. And I think I'm happy with that. So anyway, on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.